uh, welcome back to tabletop time. Is that what I'm calling this? TTRPG time? Tabletop time. One of those. Uh, I hope you all had a great weekend. We're going to be playing Beyond Super Behind the Mask. I keep wanting to call it Behind, behind the... I keep wanting to call it Beyond the Mask. Your weekend was fine, not too much, but I'm learning a bit of programming in preparation, changing careers. Ooh, learning some programming. Always a handy skill to have, especially in this day and age. If I tilt my head back... See, that's the issue, is my face is a little dark at my natural sitting angle. But if I tilt my head back a little bit, I become a Victorian ghost child. Uh, so, this lighting is obviously not ideal, but, uh, you know, such is fate. Oh, I had a very eventful weekend. I uh, did some driving and whatnot. Uh, and I'm currently wrestling with the plumbing in my home. Victorian ghost child hours. It, if I ever have to look up <laughs> for part of the story we're telling, it will become Victorian ghost child hours. Everybody welcome Magnus to the stream. Frequent guest. Hi. He laid in some maple syrup, so one of his sides is a little sticky. Because uh, as I was doing some things uh, late one night, I tripped over the bottle of maple syrup, which I left on the floor for some reason. I didn't leave it in the cabinet where it belongs, and I was like, I was like, man, what did I just trip over? And then I took one more step forward, and there's a big old puddle of maple syrup, and I was like, wow, that's really sticky. I had some choice words for it. Magnus, I need to shuffle these cards. Can I have my lap for a second? He's like, no. No, you may not. It's fine. We shuffled these at the end of last stream, didn't we? Probably. I probably shuffled them while saying that I didn't remember it. Uh. But we will do our best to play this with Magnus on our lap. There's actually a game I have, uh that literally involves your pet being on your lap as part of the mechanics of the game and like one some some monday uh i want to play that with library on my lap because magnus is too very too too picky he's so so picky about it like when i lean forward to get my mouse to you know be able to see the rules of this of this game we're playing oh excuse me uh he will not be a happy camper about it. He'll probably be like, you have moved too much and offended the prince. Goodbye. That sounds like perfection itself, and I want to see that. I cannot wait to play that. Yeah, as you can see there, I was trying to, like, get a little of the maple syrup out of his fur, and he was like, nope, don't like that. Goodbye. Uh, so, Magnus is very picky. Library does not care. Zero percent caring. Um... Like, you, as long as you are technically petting him, he will not blink an eye. Uh, okay, so we are going to be playing Behind the Mask, uh, Beyond Being a Superhero. I am going to say it incorrectly every time I think of the title. It's just like Ex Umbra, where I called it Ex Asterisk every time. Um, <laughs> but that's not, for, uh, that's not for lack of liking this game conceptually. Also, we're on the couch. It's a couch kind of night. Um, it's not for lack of liking this game conceptually. Uh, it seems like a very fun set of prompts, so let's get into it rather than me wheedling for a thousand more years. Step one of this game is to create a world by answering some questions. This game also heartily, heartily suggests using an existing world or one created by someone else you wanted to play in. Uh, you are not required to fill out all the questions that it asks. Uh, you might also want to consider playing a game that is focused on world creation before playing this. There are some great options. Personally, I thought about trying to play Ex Novo to build, like, a big, like, DC-style city. But we don't have time for that. Uh, maybe that, that would be a fun, uh, series for, like, kind of a longer, like, when I run out of the uh, endless pile of solo RPGs to play. Uh, we might come back to this by first playing Ex Novo and then just playing this game many times to like build like a cinematic universe. I like the idea of that. I might come back to it. But for now, uh, 
we're gonna pick a uh let's go with a 90s set time period because 90s comics is the one i most remember maybe i could make one city and you could play in it that would be fun like take viewer submissions for like uh like a city or the base concept of a hero and i could you know fill in the blanks on stream that's fun I have to I have to admit I'm not uh too familiar with solo tabletop RPGs. Welcome by the way. Uh welcome to the Igloo Cute Anime OSVT. Uh I have dropped into their streams uh every now and again. Uh they have a very cute like Windows 95 thing going on. Uh kind of a Netscape Navigator vibe and I'm big I'm a big fan of the aesthetics. Unfortunately, my internet is usually made of mushrooms, and I can't watch very often, but I try, and I would heartily suggest giving them a look. I'm glad that you are dropping in. Uh, solo tabletop RPGs, in a nutshell, are um, essentially improv prompts. You, like, for example, this one we're playing single-player tabletop RPGs. They have, they so have... They so happen to be a lot of fun in a group. They're really great for a stream setting like this because they're essentially a set of improv prompts. You take, like, for this game, we have a single deck of cards and we're pulling from a deck of cards and it picks prompts for us. Or, like, there's other ones where, like, you pull a bunch of cards and move a dice around the board at, around the, like, board that you build on the table. Or, like, you roll dice to pick things out of a table. Or, um, what's another one? Uh, there's one based around, like, you pick up a random person at a party's bag. It's supposed to be played in, like, a big, uh... It's supposed to be played in, like, a big circle at a party. And, like, you guys, you you shift bags one to the right and then tell a little short story about a goblin finding your bag. It's really cute and I wish I could play it, but, you know, the plague. Uh, but anyway... Yeah, that's solo tabletop RPGs in a nutshell. They're just they're just improv prompts, and they're all really fun. Uh, so where was I? I got distracted. We were building this the the basic clamshell of the city we're being in. Uh, we're gonna say nineties nineties era, uh, like late eighties, early nineties, just because that's the easiest storytelling choice I have off the top of my head. Um. What is the general opinion of superheroes? Are they known or considered a myth? I think there are a few known superheroes, but there are a lot of, like, small-time superheroes who are, like, considered just mythic. Like, there's there's no way that the Pumpkin Man's a real superhero, you know? Like, there's, there's like, a big set of, like, three or four heroes that, that are, like, massively overpowered and well-known. But, like, there's also a bunch of, like, Matter Eater Lad, and Arm Fall Off Boy, and I Scream, you know? <laughs> like, B-list, C-list, D-list superheroes that people don't necessarily believe exist until they are seen stopping a crime. Are they welcome or despised? I think it depends on what type of crime they're fighting. Uh, you know, someone's going to be a lot more happy with a... Uh, with a Batman fighting obvious street level crime than with like this is not a great example, but like a poison ivy causing bioterrorist uh events. No matter how right or wrong she is, you know, people get bent out of shape about it. So I think it varies. Uh do the governments consider consider them criminals? Do they ask for help? I think there are one or two sanctioned uh there are one or two sanctioned Mm -hmm. hero groups but the rest of them are kind of like you know just don't do anything in view of the cops and you're fine or don't cross the line and you're fine uh that kind of thing uh ice cream by the way is a real villain whose power is the ability to change into any flavor of ice cream i'm not joking real comic book hero uh, it, obviously Golden Age era character. Uh, but real thing. Um, there's also an I Scream, like, EYE Scream of the same name in, uh, the Teen Titans cartoon, whose literal shtick is he's just a 
big eye. Like his his whole face is a big eye and it does eye beam things. It's it's a choice. <laughs> it's no more wacky than original ice cream. Uh Oh, you finally got to play Sentinel with a friend. We made a really cool golem. Ah, oh, I love that. Sentinel uh was one where you play as a thing guarding a city or like a long lost uh location and uh we had a great time playing it uh and i'm glad that other people got to play it uh where was i oh uh, yeah we talked about the government tone are super villains more cartoonish or despicable i think cartoonish and despicability depends on your rogues gallery you know there's there's plenty of people like like batman's rogues gallery that's like very slapstick and very goofy and then there's plenty of people that are like, uh, you know, very dour, take me seriously, super villains, you know, Captain Cold, type type thing. Sorry, I'm using DC as my measuring stick for this because I'm a lot better at remembering DC things than I am at Marvel things, even though Marvel's more popular right now. Sorry. Um, are superheroes generally pure of heart and saviors of the world, or are those they're those that abuse their power? I think we're gonna focus on a hero that is. Uh, more pure of heart. Uh, you know, they're they're doing their best to bring good into the world because I don't want to sit here and turn into a Liefeldian gravel munching anti-hero. That's right. I'm calling out Rob Liefeld. I don't like all your all your uh, belts and pouches, sir. Learn to draw some anatomy, sir. <laughs> what are the focus of the society? What are the current issues? What has improved recently? What's become worse late re recently? Uh, I think people are very focused on the um, on the way technology is changing the world. Uh, people are very nervous about this whole internet thing. Uh, they're very nervous about uh, people street, you know, like street level thugs getting more and more access to these wild like weapon systems as you know more and more companies are like yeah i can i can fund a superhero and then their research and development departments get broken into oh man no i'm not making blood gun somebody else can make blood gun <laughs> this is not gonna be my name is blood gun my backstory is that some a gun ate my parents and then <laughs> on the dinner table threw them up and made me eat my parents and because of the radioactivity that the sentient gun induced in the remains of my parents now i have the ability to grow guns out of my fingers but i need to use my blood for the bullets Ugh. no we're not playing that turbo teen that is the superhero we need mm, yes Potentially. Uh, also, two very important terms uh, with, to keep in mind when playing this game. Uh, after hours job is the word it's using for your work as a superhero, and your day job is your secret identity job. So when it says, for example, uh, something to keep in mind, building your base character is that your after hours job has become routine you're barely getting by uh the general mood is melancholic and there are issues with your day job uh so we need to draw Ooh, okay so i didn't know i needed to have the so i'm just gonna draw a card that's the joker that shouldn't be there um oops i dropped the card now we're falling apart uh i didn't know i didn't read far enough to know that i needed one of each card now we're playing 52 pickup you guys might not have been able to see but now we're playing 52 pickup hooray my favorite card game art club spade i need a spade 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 Everybody's favorite card game. This is why I play on the table. I was like, man, I'm going to sit on the couch and play a game tonight. It's going to be comfortable. It's going to be pleasant. It is not comfortable. It is not pleasant. I have dropped my cards all over the floor. Not like this. 
Don't worry, we only had to play like 30, uh, we only had to play like 26 Pico. Only half of the cards fall on the ground. Cool, dude. Local man tries to play game. No, library, watch out, bud. I'm very put together this evening. I definitely did not do a bunch of stuff this weekend and did not have this prepared. Uh-huh. Um, okay. Stay. You may come sit on my lap, young man. Okay. So I have drawn my character creation cards out of the pile that fell on the floor. Uh, first of all, we have a complication. Spades. So then we go down to the tables, tables, tables. See, this is why I read the complications. Dang it. Okay, blah, 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 blah. This is why I read things. Our complication, our initial complication is uh, you have a strange mark on your body ca caused by your powers. So we need to decide our powers. Our powers are... Uh, I'm going to go with something that comes easily to me. Uh, I'm, with my apologies to Raz, who is going to call me on every detail about this. Uh, we're going to give our character electricity powers. Think Electro or uh, Black Lightning. Uh, what's another lightning hero? Uh, mm, Blue Bolt? I don't know why that comes to mind. Anyway, our character is a, is a lightning-based hero. Uh, his name... Uh, mm, yeah, his name... Electricity Powers, exactly. His, his, uh, his mask on name is... Uh, the Electron. <laughs> And, uh, he has, uh, only partially hidden by his half-face hiding mask, a very large series of Lichtenberg scars all over his face. So that's our, that's one of our complications. Then two of clubs, uh, we were on our way to propose to our partner, uh, when... Uh, when we were draw and in the process, because we liked, uh, because we were in need of some cash, we were driving an experimental, um, radioactive car. Uh, it was using some kind of newfangled fusion engine that we didn't quite understand. And in the process, we were driving through a thunderstorm to go propose to our partner, who has always loved rainy weather. So we wanted to go propose to them, like, hey. Let's go share an umbrella and we'll sit in the park. But the storm started picking up suddenly and... <clears throat> that's not a lightning sound. Uh, a lightning bolt struck our fusion-powered car and made it explode. And the lightning bolt flew through our head in the process. Uh, and that's how we got our powers. We were in a coma for like six months after that. And when we woke up, we could, you know, blast people Cole McGrath style. Uh, diamonds, our power, oh, oh, the card was supposed to choose our power, oops, well, we're just, we'll just put that to the side and pretend we drew the right card for lightning, too bad, decision made, we were supposed to have the power of flight, you know what, who says we can't fly with electricity, sure, electrostatic levitation doesn't quite work like that, but it's fine, definitely no problems here, last then certainly not least is our or oh, we already decided our origin why do i keep stepping on my own toes uh it's uh, this card the eight of hearts claims that we are a government experiment so let's just retcon immediately you know that comics thing that happens a lot let's retcon that we were driving a united states government experimental fusion car when we were struck by the lightning Okay, <laughs> that's our origin story. That's a little bit about us. Okay, uh... What is our name? The Electron, obviously, is our hero name. 
Um, what else? Character creation. Yeah, we are the Electron. Our name is... What's, an, what's a good E name? Everett... Everett, uh... I need to think of an E last name. Everett Euler. The Electron. Everett... Euler. AKA the Electron. Type that one in chat so you all can remember. Uh, we have a rival. Um, do they necessarily need to be the same person? Oh, we could have just made up our character without using those cards we drew. It's fine. We did a little bit of both because we dabble with the rules and without the rules. Uh, our rival is um, uh, Amanda... Amanda Waller. No, that's that's a DC character. I'm sorry. Um, Amanda... Amanda Argentum. Uh, and she works... Uh, she works opposite, opposite us at our day job as a reporter. Uh, you know, we, we both worked and we both work on the byline in the science department of this. What if our rival is the power of wind? I was getting there. Um, I was exact, I was on the exact same thought line there. Uh, what did I say her name was? Amanda. Uh, I'm going to forget her name. I'm sorry. Uh even though I have made her up right now. Uh, Amanda works opposite us. We are the only two employees on the science part of this newspaper, and so we fight over the byline. And uh, little, to, little do we know, uh, Amanda has control over the power, uh, control over wind currents. Uh, how did she get those powers? We don't know. But all we know is she's also our uh, rival, our arch nemesis, uh, the Silver Wind. Yes, Amanda has a last name and we've forgotten it. So, you know, that's fun. I think in character she forgot it. Uh, ooh, uh, just another guy named Harry. Your name is long enough that it is breaking a couple things on my stream, but welcome to the Igloo. Very happy to have you here. Uh, let's continue making this character. Uh, look. Uh, I can't draw, so we're just gonna describe our character in a nutshell. Uh, I think, uh, we have an all-rubber suit to stop us, f stop people from trying to reflect our lightning bolts back at us, because we're not immune to electricity. Uh, we can just control where it goes through our body, for the most part. So we have fingerless gloves, um a rubber suit, a little uh, lightning rod looking thing sticking out of the top of our helmet. Think uh, think the little lightning winglings on the Flash, but uh, more antennae, uh, closer to like ambush bug. And they're kind of, you know, lightning rod shaped. They've got the little like ball and then the little like three circular things, you know, science fiction style, you know, ray gun looking things. Uh, and it's all bright yellow because subtlety is for squ because subtly subtlety is for rich men fighting crime in a dark city that reminds you of Chicago. Um, uh, in in our normal day to day life, we just kind of have a standard work sona, kind of a loosely tied tie, a short sleeve dress shirt with a uh, you know a tan. Uh, blazer jacket over it and you know khakis nothing fancy just enough to make people remember that we are a reporter uh contacts two groups of people two people or groups you work with uh i think a group that we work we work with uh whenever they're rolling through town uh is the galactic police uh you know they they recruit one person from each inhabited planet uh, for as far as they can find, and uh, we didn't necessarily know the Galactic Police recruit from Earth, uh, but we got to know them uh, as, you know, the world of superheroes expanded. You know, when we first got our powers, there was, like, 
three people and two of them weren't from Earth. They were just visiting because Earth has weird stuff happen to it. Um, but as the world of superheroes has, has expanded, we we got to know the uh, the Galactic Police rep for Earth, uh, who is a struggle, who is in their day job a struggling. Uh, Let's make it meta, a struggling uh, indie comic book artist. Um, and then another contact of ours is the uh, costume designer. Uh, this this guy, uh, no, no, this, this girl uh, initially was a fashion designer, uh, got fed up with that, and as soon as uh, superheroes started coming out, uh, she had been very focused on like the design of new materials. That to make into clothing, and so it was a very small jump for her to go from uh, catwalk fashion to hero suit design. Uh, and she has a name. Her name is Isabella. That's a decision I'm making. Uh, weakness. How can others take advantage? We're not immune to electricity. Uh, and despite our insulative suit, um, you know, people can use technology of some kind to reflect the beams back at us then if they hit us wrong our ticker ain't gonna be happy uh additionally we either have to draw the electricity from our in nearby environment um or generate it ourselves but generating enough bioelectricity to do anything more than a little carpet shock uh takes a lot out of us so we have to eat like lots and lots of like potassium and uh sodium and you know we'll, the things that make your nerves go and so we are we're constantly in danger of potassium potassium deficiency in particular okay yeah there's some other questions that would let us fill out the uh fill out the what's the word i'm looking for uh, fill out the character, but no, <laughs> uh, we'll do the, I'll do those if we launch into the, like, uh, cinematic universe stuff, but anyway, uh, some optional rules reference card values. I'm just going to skim over all the optional rules. I don't think we have time for them tonight. They look really fun. Like you roll D sixes in, in time. Uh, like when you pull a card you roll a d6 to alter the way it uh changes and like you can uh apply specific detail details and theming or like what crimes are happening where the crimes are happening descriptors of the people we're interacting with uh there is a mechanic called goodwill that like kind of acts as a, as a karma Karma meter, uh, it involve it lets you pull mixed success type stuff. Uh, I really like it, but I don't have my dice. They're over there, and I'm too lazy to get them. So we'll do that if we come back to this game. Um, we keep track during play. Keep track of the following. Keep track of how often you had to lie to people to protect your secret. Keep track of who knows your secret. Keep track of how often you choose to put yourself first keep track of how often you choose to put others first and keep track of how often your personal life suffers for your secret one take these into consideration when writing the epilogue of your story uh there's some stuff with the count with countering of cards there's some optional rules about connections that look really fun uh Definitely, definitely worth looking into these optional, uh, optional stuff. Very fun. Okay, so we, we shuffle our deck of cards, and then we draw an event card, we choose an action from the list, and then, and then we tell the story based on the, using the prompt provided by the card we draw and the action we choose to take on that prompt. So, there are five, wait, no, yes, five actions, one, two, three, four, five, and we will, we will hit each of them as we go. So let's begin. Uh, let's draw our first card here. 
this is the, the our first real card is the seven of clubs so during our day job uh wait now uh events i lied uh seven of clubs a reporter wants to interview your persona so being a uh wait wait, wait i need to decide what uh i need to decide what's happening uh, with our action here let's let's say we make a promise we won't keep so as a reporter uh it's been very easy to get the necessary exclusives with the electron uh because we've been keeping track of them you know the, the science of why his powers work and stuff and so it's been very easy for us as everett to have the only exclusive interviews with the electron well someone gets a hold of the electrons contact information which is kept very, very secret. We have a burner phone to answer as the electron. And one day we're sitting at our desk writing a science article about, you know, some comet that may be swinging near to the Earth in, in five to ten days. And, uh, zzz, 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 zzz. and we pick up the phone and realize which phone it is. And it goes zzz, zzz, in our hand. And we rush off into the bathroom so nobody can... Uh, you know, actually, no, we rush off to the roof of the building so nobody can snoop. Zzz. Hello? Hi, uh, I was, uh, is this the right contact information for the, uh, the Electron? Y yes. Might I ask how you got this? Yeah, my name is, um... And the person on the other end of the phone clearly pauses to think of an alias almost saying her real name. My name is, um... Tell you what, we don't even need names for this uh, until we see... Uh, we don't even need names for this. This needs to be done anonymously anyway, so you can call me Annie. Hi, Annie. What are we doing anonymously? And uh, a, a little, a little uh, arc... A little arc sparks between the fingers of our off hand as we're holding the phone. Like, you know, am I about to be threatened? Yeah, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm being unnecessarily cryptic. I, uh, uh, I, what was I trying to, yeah, uh, I would like to interview you. Um, I've, uh, I've spoken to the press about my desire for, uh, remaining as anonymous as possible and as such uh i desired to only have exclusive interviews with mr everett euler of the of the um what's the paper called oh it's the paper called uh let's call it the uh i want to include the word rag i want to like the something rag uh, just because it was named, like, self-depreciatingly, because it was a 90s. Uh, the Megavolt, I like that a lot. Um, it was kind of made... It's a very recently existing newspaper outlet that uh, kind of thumbs its nose at the fact that it was made in the 90s, so it's called... It was made so recently, and so it kind of thumbs its nose at other papers that are like, haha, we've existed since 1888. And they go by the Megavolt rag. I like that a lot. Um, I, as, as I've stated to the press many times, uh, I, I choose to not break my exclusivity with uh, Everett Euler of the Megavolt rag. Uh, I, uh, well, yes, I know. But um, you see, I need, I need a scoop. I've been sitting at uh I've been sitting at my desk unable to find, you know, my paper is one of the few that actually tracks superhero news and I really really need a scoop. I can't do another article on how uh I can't do another article on how the gray the silver winds boots have changed for the third time this month. Uh, my boss will kill me. I assume you don't mean that literally. Uh, well, um, 
I don't think so, but also their hands can randomly grow in size when they are not thinking about it. There was an accident with some like radioactive pie, I believe was the was what happened. They went to jokingly shove their thumb into a pie and it was full of radium. It was supposed to be for a to try and poison a hero. Anyway, I digress. They can randomly grow their hands. Sometimes it actually happens when they're gesturing wildly and it just it doesn't end well. Ma'am, ma'am, you are rambling on. Tell you what, you meet me, you meet me on the roof of the Megavolt Rag Building. <laughs> Tonight, at 6 p.m., and we will try to talk. Thank you so much, sir. I, I, I owe you, I owe you so, so much. Uh, I will see you there, no matter how much it takes for me. Click. And uh, Everett looks at his phone, flips it closed, puts it back in his pocket, and sighs. This is absolutely something that he, this is not a date he can keep. Obviously, he's not going to do any, uh, he's not going to be doing any interviews as the Electron face-to-face uh, -face with anyone. He can't hold the Electron voice for that long. He's shocked that he held it for that long uh, on the phone. And so this is immediately a promise he can't keep. Doubly so because he has a date tonight. Whether that date will happen will be determined by the cards. So let's pull another card. Another event happens. The Ace of Diamonds means... Oh, these events have no theme. The Ace of Diamonds. You are caught in a lie. So, um... We are leaving work. We're leaving work and we are going to, uh, we're going to go on a blind day or, uh, no, we already established this, the, that, uh, Everett was, had a, uh, you know what? No, I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it tragic. Uh, Everett lost his soon to be fiance after the car crash because, uh, he is chronically late. And uh, he's trying to find someone to uh, be a companion because his soon-to-be fiance left him. Because after he came out of his coma, he approached his uh, he approached his former fiance, and she was like, "Listen, you were almost dead for six months. I cheated on you. I'm sorry." And that was that. And so now he is. Uh, he is, he's going on blind dates and, uh, he pulls up to this, uh, this blind date at the, um, at the local Hawaiian restaurant, let's say, uh, and he pulls up and walks in and sitting at the table is, uh, is the gal from the phone. Uh, you remember how she sounded? Uh, I don't, <laughs> uh, the gal from the phone and she uh waves him over and he sits down and he's like and uh he <laughs> he because he's nervous uh he accidentally speak he accidentally says hello in his electron voice and immediately the girl sit, sitting at the table recognizes his voice and she just looks uh he just looks shocked, uh, which is perfect because one of the actions here is counteract something that happened before. Uh, we are now caught in the lie that we were going to take this interview as the Electron, uh, and the girl immediately, like, her eyes bug out of her head, and she's like, you have to be kidding me. And uh, Everett kind of clears his throat. <laughs> What do you mean? I, I don't know what you're talking about. I know exactly the voice you were just using. What, what do you mean? I, I, I was just nervous. I, 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 I talk a little, a little, a little lower, lower in my throat when I'm nervous. You know, feel a little more masculine. And she's like, no, no. I know that voice. I know exactly who you are. And, and Everett's like, no. What's that? Everett's like, 
there's restaurant chatter. Keep your voice down. We're in a crowded restaurant. Do you know what it means to say I know who you are at the top of your voice in this day and age? Someone could e reasonably assume that I was any number of, of Cape Crusaders. Keep your voice down. I don't want to get assassinated because someone thinks that I'm that I'm the fireball that just blew up an airport five blocks away. And she kind of goes, oh, I am so sorry. And then she kind of puts she kind of puts on a very bad acting job of, oh man, I really must have uh, I really must have hurt. I must be hearing things. I'm so sorry, sir. It's just been a long day at work, and she's continuing to overact. And Everett is like, <sighs> and eventually she finally stops doing her shtick, and you know, like five people buy what she's saying. And eventually Everett's like, oh, okay, 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 you got me, you caught me, what are you gonna do? You gonna publish my face to the press, ruin my whole life? Oh, no, no, just now I know what we're doing after dinner. And she takes a very smug drink out of the glass that's sitting on her table, and uh, after tucking into a... Uh, a nice uh, chicken katsu and some spam musibi. Um, <laughs> they are both super awkward because uh, I decided so. It's more fun that way. After talking into you know some some fun Hawaiian food. Oh, excuse me. There's a very cute library. He he looks like he's trying to decide whether it's too bright. Look at his little paw. What is your little man? Uh, after after talking into some nice Hawaiian food, uh, the pickled radishes are always uh, are specifically pretty great. It's why he suggested it to uh, his blind date. He was like, he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I know a great Hawaiian place downtown. I know it sounds weird, but these pickled radishes, man, they are fantastic. Played against anything that needs acid, it's so good. You gotta trust me. And. She does trust him. Uh, unfortunately, now we have to trust her with the secret that we are the Electron. And uh, for once, uh, we can dispose of the Electron voice uh, while in the costume, which feels very strange. You know, we, we ascend to the roof of this building. It's much easier for her to get up there with our help, our press pass. Uh, we're sitting on top of the... Uh, on top of the Megavolt building. Yeah, it's called the Megavolt building. This is a, uh, it's a dot com. Somebody invested their dot com boom money into uh, the Megavolt rag because they wanted a cool new hip paper. Uh, and, you know, so it has a big high rise in, in downtown. Um, what's a good comic book city name? Uh. Sorry, I, I keep tripping over this, man. Uh, let's go with Steel City. I like that. Uh, in Steel City, which, you know, we as the reader of this comic book would obviously recognize as Detroit. Um, in Steel City, uh, it, it, it advanced rapidly on the back of the steel industry. And uh, then supers happened. And uh, with its already high crime rate, it immediately attracted a bunch of supers. Like, one of the few government-sanctioned teams, the, uh, the G-Men, uh, are actually stationed here. And there's a lot of, like, there's a massive mesh of, like, street-level heroes that do, you know, small-time crime-fighting, like the Electron, uh, here. <laughs> so, anyway, we're on the top of the, uh, we're on the top of the Megavolt building, and, uh, for once, we... We, you know, duck behind an air conditioner and put on and take off our, uh, take off our day-to-day -day clothes to find that 99% of the rubber suit is there. Half-Life and X-Men reference. I, is, is Steel City a, uh, <laughs> no, 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 X-Men because G-Man. Yes. Thank you. Large brain. Um, 
I, I meant it more literally as in, like, you know, you call an FBI agent a G-man if you don't like what he's doing. <sighs> yes, yes, library. Um, <laughs> anyway, we sit on top of the, uh, on top of the Mega Bowl building and, you know, pull on our costume very hastily. Yes. Um, and, uh, we give a, we give a full interview to, uh, this girl, uh, you know, probably out of the threat of if we had bailed on it now, she would have blackmailed us to every, you know, every person that would listen. And, uh, finally, it lets this young woman, uh, whose name is Laura, uh, uh, Laura, uh, what's a good, what's a good last name that starts with L? I want to say Lane, but that's way too obvious. Um, God, I should have had, like, I should have written down a bunch of names, like a good bunch of alliterative names. Laura Lawrence. That's definitely not confusing. Um, Ms. Laura Lawrence gets uh, the first interview that is of the Electron that is not by Mr. Everett. Uh, and so it's a huge hit, especially with the superhero go uh, the the superhero gossip rag that it runs in. Like, the Electron has always been kind of a no-nonsense hero, not really paid attention to the tabloids or the cape chasers or anything. And uh, it's a huge hit because it is the first time he's stepped into the spotlight in any form or fashion. Uh, you know, he comes clean about his origin story well, as much of his origin story as he's allowed to tell based on the NDA. Uh, and, you know, uh, Laura does... Laura does her best to alter the details so it does not make it incredibly obvious to anyone who's running a background... who can run a background check, whoever it is as the Electron. And hopefully it's enough. Well, let's pull our next card. Uh, the King of Clubs means something happens with our day job or no it doesn't that's the wrong table uh you lose your day job <laughs> okay yeah uh we as soon as this article hits the presses uh our boss calls us in and starts berating us like Half of the reason we still had our byline opposite Amanda uh, was because we were the only person able to get uh, we were the only person to get interviews with the Electron, even though it didn't suit the science byline. Uh, you know, the boss didn't care because these were exclusives. Now that you don't have that exclusive exclusivity, you can get you can get packing, buddy. Your desk, uh, empty your desk. Give me your pens. Uh, you don't get to take any of the nice paper, nice uh, cardstock that you've been saving from the company, uh, from the company supply closet. Goodbye. Uh, and so you know, as one does when one loses their job, we immediately feel the need to reach out to someone for some comfort, and uh, having just you know, accidentally revealed the biggest secret of our life to uh, Miss Laura, we immediately reach out to her for comfort. Like, I lost my job. And we don't mention to Laura that it is technically probably her fault that uh, we lost our job, but in the back of our head, that's that's a thought. And uh, Laura's like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Um... Tell you what, you can crash on my couch. I know my roommates like to play loud heavy metal at three in the morning, and one of my roommates is constantly sneezing because she refuses to take any allergy medication, and the other roommate is constantly, um, what is the other roommate? Constant. The other roommate is constantly doing dishes because she's a home chef, um, but apparently she makes good money on this newfangled internet thing. She's been selling recipes really well. Apparently, Martha Stewart even featured her once. Anyway, she's constantly doing dishes at all hours, and it's really loud, and I'm sorry. 
um, and my and my neighbors are a heavy metal band, and like she keeps listing things that make this place just an atrocious place to live. And internally, you know, we're we're like, <gasps> you know, if this were a panel, uh, you know, it would be a panel focusing on Laura. And like as she's talking, the dialogue box gets larger and larger, panel by panel. And eventually it fills the whole panel and then like out of the pattern of words that are slowly becoming nonsense we see everett's face like oh what have i got myself into um and you know despite all of the things that laura is saying about me uh, about this apartment being just the worst feasible place to live especially as a superhero um it's not that bad Sure, somebody's doing dishes at all hours of the day, and, like, you can never tell when it's safe to duck out the door and become the Electron, but, you know, it, uh, it's better than having to pay any bills, and, uh, we managed to start, uh, trawling about on the, uh, on the internet, trying to find, you know, something, anything to do, and, uh, what do we do, though? That's determined by this card that I just drew. Uh, 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 the, the two of, of spades. An event happens. Someone who knows your secret almost lets it slip to someone else. Uh, as we are slowly scrolling through the internet, uh, we are actively avoiding the Electron fan forums because no, uh-uh not a thing that we're doing no i'm not going to read people commenting on where the heck is the electron you know uh, no i'm not going to read about people commenting on how i uh why are these so perfect i know the cards are really happy with me tonight um no i'm not going to read about how people are complaining about the electron uh accidentally sneezing uh, a bolt of lightning at that one cop one time no, I'm not going to read the comments on uh, how there should be official Electron merch. Wait. Official Electron merch? Now that's a good idea. And so, uh, we once again... Oh no, the cards! Drop my... Drop my playing cards. Uh, we're going to take the ask for help action here, uh, which is the action, mm, one of the actions available from the set of responses to a prompt. We're going to take the ask for help action here, uh, and we're going to ask one of Laura's roommates, uh, the blog poster, um, you know, like, hey, you know a lot about cape chasing. You know a lot about superhero marketing. Um, Laura knows the Electron. Could you maybe talk to her about talking with the Electron or, like, use her as a liaison uh, to, like, sell Electron merch? People seem interested in you, like, kind of point her at the screen and she like immediately lights up and she's like of course i will uh and she's super excited about it there's a light blinking outside my uh outside my door and it's making me nervous um maybe it's just someone with a flashlight hopefully it's just someone with a flashlight anyway um it's really distracting uh of course i will and she starts animatedly chattering with Laura about it. Like, she's talking with her hands. She's really bubbly. She's, like, clearly very excited. She's getting slowly louder and louder and louder. And, uh, you hear several times Laura almost says Everett instead of Electron. <laughs> and, uh, she just barely, barely keeps it from slipping. Uh, and you're fairly sure that if her roommate Sarah Silverman... Uh, that might actually be a real person's name. I'm sorry. Um, Sarah Silverman. Yes, they all have comic book names. Uh, Miss Sarah Silverman, uh, if she was not so excited about, um, 
about the concept of getting to lead a superhero's merch line, uh, she absolutely would have figured out whoever it, uh, uh, ever it is. And that would have, you know, ended kind of poorly, as it does when one's uh, secret identity escapes. Let's pull the next card here. The Eight of Clubs. Wow, you really can't see these cards, like, because they are dark cards with, like, bright text. Like, I have to hold them way up to the camera under these lighting conditions. The Eight of Clubs. Also, another thing that I really like about this game in particular, it literally says just keep playing until you run out of cards or you're done. Or you feel like you're done. There's no, like, Oh man, you need to hit these specific cards. It's very great for this setting. Okay, so uh, Everett's secret identity is nearly uh, leaked in the process of uh, selling some Electron merch. Uh, you know, it's a couple of like t-shirts and some novelty uh, like fingerless winter gloves that look like his bright yellow costume gloves. And, like, a little bobblehead, and, uh, a little plush, uh, a little plush electron with little suction cups on the hands that clings to your car window. Um, you know, just a bunch of really weird merchandise choices, but there are enough fans of the electron out there that they sell, and we make a little money, and we are, uh, you know, a little closer to being back on our feet. Uh, unfortunately, someone has the chance to uncover who you are, but lets you keep your secret. Unfortunately, in the process, uh, we, uh, reach out to find comfort, make a discovery. We discover that Sarah Silverman, a buzzer, like a prank buzzers, uh, that is absolutely also a, a merchandise item, is, like, little buzzers. You know how, like, there's the Spider-Man, like, you press the button and it shoots silly string? Uh, this is exactly what those prank buzzers are marketed at, as, as. It's like, feel like the Electron! Real play action! Bzz, ah! You know? <laughs> and, like, the commercial when somebody gets buzzered, because, of course, there's, like, there's, like, some 6 a.m., like, you know, minimum marketing budget, like, 6 a.m., one person awake to see them commercials, where, like, after the person gets hand buzzered, they, like, they, like, dis they explode into a bunch of, like, cheaply animated lightning bolts. Um, but we discover something. Uh... What do we discover? We discover that uh, Sarah Silverman is not only a real uh, a real webhead, a real lover of the internet. She's also very, very gay. And uh, this being the late '90s, uh, that's not as well accepted as it as it is nowadays. And uh, she just lets it slip. Uh, you know, she's she's you know talking to Everett. Um, She's talking to Everett about something. She's talking to Everett about, like, you know, love life, and Everett's talking back to her about love life. Like, man, I I, I had a fiancé, and then, like, she left me because I keep, uh... Because I'm really late, and it's hard for me to keep appointments. How much longer until the Saturday morning cartoon for our character? We'd have to bag some major, major, uh, major wins for a Saturday morning cartoon. But who knows, maybe, like, 20 years after the character exists, someone could make a, a Saturday morning cartoon. When there's nostalgia for the first wave of superheroes. But, uh, yeah, like, Everett is, you know, they're talking about dating. Um, and Sarah is very intentionally being very vague about the people she's dating. You know, as one does. Uh, and Everett is complaining, Everett is complaining, you know, that he's had very, very bad luck in love, uh, you know, and he's framing it as like, oh yeah, I'm so forgetful and like, 
I'm just so bad with time and people don't appreciate that. And it's like, I, I can never, you know, keep a schedule around and I've been bouncing from job to job and like, I don't sleep very well sometimes. And, you know, he's, he's very like, he's very deftly weaving this web of excuses. Uh, but Sarah being, you know, essentially a cape chaser, uh, recognizes the standard superhero excuses but doesn't press because uh as she's talking she doesn't catch herself once and she says yeah my girlfriend and everett kind of makes a surprised face and she looks she looks everett right in the eyes and says listen i can probably guess what you do uh as your as your night job, let's say. Uh, but you don't tell anybody about what I just said, and I won't tell anybody about my suspicions about your, about your. Uh, what's the what's the official? What's the official? Uh, dang it! What's the official word that the game uses for your time being caped? Yeah, your your night job, I guess. I can't remember. Uh, so I was like, listen, you don't tell anybody about me. Outings? Yeah, I don't think that's the official word, but I think that's what Sarah says. You don't tell anybody about my dates, and I won't tell anybody about your outings. And uh, we just kind of, uh, after hours job. That's the official phrasing. But she says outings. You don't tell anybody about my dates. I won't tell anybody about your outings. We both sip our lips. We're fine. And Everett kind of just gulps and nods. And he doesn't say anything about it to anybody. Because he's not about to get outed. Uh, so we now pulled the Jack of Clubs for another uh, thing that happens. Let's look at the table. Uh, also, this game is very much, like, more focused on you are physically writing a journal because, like, these are meant to be events that are physically being journaled by Everett in a physical book to, like, keep his sanity. Ooh, we find ourselves on a date! How fitting! Uh, what action are we going to take with the date? Uh, I mean, I'm so tempted to go for, uh, make a promise you won't keep. Because that is the easiest option there. But, uh, no. <laughs> So we find ourselves on a date with, uh, you know what? Let's, uh, let's offer help. Part of the heckin' cards again. Yes, absolutely. Uh, let's offer help to Sarah. Let's lean in. Uh, someone at Sarah's job is trying to lavender scare her. Uh, because, you know, she has to do something to pay for this massive internet bill she rings up. Someone at Sarah's job is trying to lavender scare her. Uh, and in order to deflect suspicion, she calls up Everett and is like, Hey, so remember those things we weren't going to talk about? I need your help. <laughs> and, uh, and Everett's like, uh, do I, um, uh, probably, uh, yeah, sure. I can probably help. Hi. Everett. And, uh, so we agree to take Sarah uh, out on a date to see a film. Uh, you know, what's 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 the best way to you know repay secrets kept? Why by generating more secrets? Uh, we we decide that uh, we decide with Sarah that uh, we're going to beard for her essentially you know take her out on a date anytime someone's getting 
a little suspicious. Yeah, Cad Stewart. Um, you know, instead of going to see a film, uh, we take Sarah on a date to the local Humane Society. Uh, and we spin, you know, uh, we spin very loudly over the phone uh, to her, in earshot of her co-workers, uh, a story about how uh, we're a real animal lover. We're not. We're severely allergic. Uh, we're a real animal lover, and man, I just want to take you to the animal shelter uh, so we can see all those lovely friends down there and make sure they're having a good time and maybe adopt somebody. And uh, so Everett Downs, you know, half a pound of Claritin, you know. And what was... Was Claritin still, like, a popular anti-allergy pill in the 90s? It was in the 2000s. Whatever. Anachronistic Claritin. TM. Uh, if Claritin didn't exist, it got invented uh, 10 to 15 years earlier in this universe because of uh, because of superheroes. Uh, so Everett downs several extra strength Claritin and uh, takes Sarah to the Humane Shelter, uh, where they sit and, uh, you know, they basically just sit in a pile of cats and pet them and be very happy. And then uh, Everett uh, several, uh, you know, like an hour in, uh, the Claritin starts wearing off and Everett's nose becomes a block of snot and his eyes start to swell and he's like, I think we have to go. <laughs> and we do, but it's, and we do, but it is a sufficiently cute date to throw the co-workers off the scent for a little while. Okay. See, now I gotta know, Library, I need you to not lay on my phone. I need to know when Claritin was invented. Was Claritin on the market in the 90s? Claritin was I need to know. Uh, now that I've gotten thoroughly distracted, Claritin. Wikipedia. Oh no, my internet. Hang on. Rings of Avengers. Okay, so while I was reactivating the internet, there it goes. Uh, okay, so while I was reactivating the internet, uh, I learned that the antihistamine that makes uh, Claritin, Claritin work, loratadine, was invented in 1976. So it is not anachronistic Claritin, thank you very much. <laughs> Fully realistic Claritin TM. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, I've also completely lost the plot of where we were. We were bearding for Sarah. I don't remember beyond that. Okay. Uh, we were bearding for Sarah. That's where we're jumping back on uh we'll pull another card the seven of spades i almost said that seven of diamonds because i couldn't see the card very clearly i need to work on my lighting i'm, I'm fixing it don't worry <laughs> seven of spades <laughs> means spades 
Seven of Spades, your persona loses relevance. Okay, we're going to go with the... Uh, we're going to go... We're going to ask for and offer some... We're going to ask for some help from... We're going to finally involve our old friend, Isabella. And, uh, you know, we've been seeing a lot of... As the years have gone by and we move slowly into the late 90s, uh, and the first wave of superheroes are getting older and uh, changing their costume designs and stuff, uh, we call up Isabella. Uh, we call up Isabella from our Electron phone, and we say to Isabella... Hey, uh, Isabella, uh, everybody's getting these redesigns, and I think the, uh, yellow suit with the, with the beta, with, with the ray, with the ray gun antennae is, uh, looking a little dated. Uh, do you have any ideas for me? And she, uh, she very cheerily is like, yes, of course, absolutely. I've been sitting on a costume redesign for you, uh, when you finally, uh, came to your senses and realized that... That monochrome yellow disaster you've been wearing for the past for the past five years is absolutely atrocious. Sorry, she's still talking into the phone. Just library is literally about to bite my hand because I'm not petting him. Um, and uh, you know Everett rolls his eyes so hard that Isabella can hear it through the phone, but he goes and sees the uh, redesign she has in mind. Uh. Unfortunately for poor Everett, it is one of those uh, classic Death of Superman, super gritty, like overly gritty takes on a, a character that was, you know, partially beloved for its anti for its ability to be visually the antithesis of all the '90s grit and grime and leather jackets. I'm saying this because I love the grit and grime leather jackets costumes. My favorite Superboy design is the super bi-looking one where he's literally just a kid in a punk leather jacket with spikes and a Superboy and a Superman t-shirt and the, like, goggles. Oh, I, I love that Superboy design, by the way. And I love that he's currently canon for the most comic book reason of all time. The man literally avoided like four retcons by being in a pocket dimension and then somebody finally opened the door on his pocket dimension or maybe he punched his way out i don't remember anyway he strolls out of this pocket dimension looking like the most 90s superhero known to man and is like what's up i'm superboy and then like the connor kent style superboy that everybody knows from young justice is like you're not superboy i'm superboy and they start tussling about it anyway I've gotten off topic. Um, so the Electron gets a redesign, and it is, uh, to put it bluntly, it looks like a CW costume. Uh, it is all, like, <clears throat> it's all, like, tactical mustard yellow um, and armor plating, and, like, there's a bandolier of, like, little batteries... <laughs> Oh, no, yeah, the Superboy thing is a real thing. I don't know if it's actively still canon, because I haven't kept track of how many events DC has done recently, but semi-recently, real thing, Superboy just strolls out of a pocket dimension like, what's up, I'm 90 Superboy, and I have the best design known to man, get dunked on. Um, and that, that I, I'm saying that. I love 90 Superboy's design. It's so good. Like, it's, hang on. Uh, no, I'm not gonna hold my phone up to the screen. Just Google, like, Google original Young Justice Superboy. You will see what I mean. There is no way that kid, there is no way that man is straight. <laughs> like, and they're finally letting him be kind of bi in the new comics, and I'm like, yes, finally, let him date Tim Drake. Tim Drake just came out as gay. Please. Anyway. Even though it's, like, four different versions of Tim Drake ago that they were a little gay. Anyway, back on topic with the Electron. Uh, it's all, like, mustard yellow armor plating, and, like, there's, like, subtly embossed lightning bolts everywhere, and, like, the, the fingerless gloves are now fingered, but each finger can hinge when it senses electricity, so, like, it looks like there's caps on the end of his fingers and like 
There's a bandolier of batteries and like there's a leather jacket to go with it that has like it's the only pop of color in the ensemble and it's like bright neon green. Uh the the cowl is completely gone, replaced with like a helmet looking thing. Like it is a completely featureless helmet and like uh Everett instead of seeing out of eye holes in this featureless helmet now it projects a screen where it like gives him tactical information so he just looks like he has like it, it looks like he's wearing like a it looks like he's a bucket from the shoulders up like it just looks disastrously bad and it is so bad and the uh screen has such a bad habit of cutting out as he's drawing power from the world around him uh, that he starts, you know, flubbing crimes, like, villains are getting away, like, one time a purse snatcher, like, threw a, uh, at least the helmet is functional, the helmet is semi-functional, uh, one time, like, a purse snatcher snatched someone's purse, uh, and for some reason this, this lady had an EMP grenade in her purse, and the purse snatcher pulled this grenade out of the purse, threw it at Everett, and it boonk off of the helmet and then went off. And so he's completely blind, like stumbling around like, I can't see. I can't see. <laughs> and so immediately now people know if you disable the helmet, uh, he's completely useless. And eventually, uh, after this happens like three times, Everett learns to electrolocate a little bit. Uh, it's not very clear, but he's at least not tripping over his own feet or a stone on the ground to chase villains. Uh, but eventually, you know, his his public opinion's tanking and tanking. The 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 merchandise line based on his uh, original costume that people like much better is becoming like a collector's item, and Everett's not seeing any of the money because they're all secondhand sales. Oh. Uh, he tries to reach out to the, uh, he through Sarah tries to, uh, <laughs> tries to reach out to the marketing people who originally started selling the Electron merch, like, hey, uh, I'm about to change my costume, here's the design, uh, can I get some new merchandise made so people still know I'm a hero, and they don't just see, like, a big yellow thumb and assume that I'm about to, like, squish everyone like ants and the marketing people are like <laughs> that looks awful no but he didn't pay attention to that because he's like oh it's just marketing people i'm a hero it's fine and uh eventually the uh the costume goes over so poorly that he just he just hangs up his cape for a little while <laughs> he's just like fine i'll get it redesigned again after i rustle up some work Let's see what the, the Five of Diamonds gives us here. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. Five of Diamonds, you receive a mysterious note. So, uh... I think because, uh... What's her name? Amanda? Uh... I think because Amanda, the Silver Wind, uh, was our uh, rival, our main villainess, uh, she gets genuinely concerned um, about about the Electron's health. And so uh, we discover through this uh, through this mysterious note that gets left uh, that gets slipped under our door. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, we're walking in the street and someone runs into us and we go, oh, hey, and uh, straighten up and they rush off and they don't say anything. So we're like, ah, oh, fine. And uh, as we're pulling out our wallet, uh, oh, man, I don't have my wallet in my pocket. Oh, that would be perfect. Uh, we're pulling out our wallet to pay for coffee. We find tucked in behind the five that we're paying this guy for coffee that we're getting change out of. Tucked in behind the five is a uh, somewhat thick and like a note that has been folded many times uh and we kind of huh? so uh, we get the change back from the coffee guy and we kind of uh you know double check that nobody's looking and open this note 
open this node and open this node and open this node and open this node and it, it folds like an un it unfolds like an unreasonable amount of times until we're holding like a like a literally a road map and uh the road map is uh pointing to the former secret hideout of the electron and uh it's kind of it's got got the address circled and it's signed it's signed to the silver wind and uh it just it has it circled and it says i know you were there and then there's a line drawn like direction style from the old like hideout that we had to sarah's apartment who we've been crashing in uh you know instead of sleeping on her couch now we are sleeping in her room to you know uh beard more effectively for her and uh it, it has her apartment circled and it's it's signed it, it says i know you're here and uh, it's signed the silver wind and uh we hastily fold the map back up as best we can it gets a little crumply because we can't fold as elegantly but uh we kind of rush home uh and realize in, in that discovery that Amanda has always known who we are. Uh, they purely viewed the superhero, the superheroic rivalry that we were taking on as entertainment. <laughs> like, they were doing it because it was a good time. And now they're concerned that we have uh, hung up the cowl for too long. And so, uh, we have some uh, prototype merch sitting on the shelf in Sarah's room because, you know, of course we get the first run of it because, uh, you know, we helped design it. We helped design it. Uh, and so we sell uh, one of the prototype uh, electron bobbleheads and uh, finally pay Isabella for a re-redesigned costume that's closer to the original yellow wetsuit with finger with fingerless gloves and the space uh this the horns that look like uh ray guns uh the horns that look like ray guns actually come back that was the one thing that people uh really missed the most from the old costume they thought it made uh made him look very pulpy and a lot of people really liked that you know being able to shoot lightning from your fingers is a really pulpy power, so why don't you lean in? Uh, so that's one of the things it's the things that comes back. Uh, the armor plating stays, uh, but it's it's in a much more saturated yellow now. Because people actually really liked the armor plating. It kind of built out Everett's somewhat slim frame uh, to make him look a little more super heroic. Uh, they actually keep... Uh, they keep part of the helmet idea. Uh, they... they do the you know traditional superhero half cowl hood thing but in the lenses of the cowl now there are tactical screens that fail safe essentially if they are to fail they just turn into clear lenses instead of oh god a completely opaque helmet i can't see through and like the bandolier of batteries actually stays but instead of being a bandolier it's like a backpack that actually enables our uh, our electrostatic levitation to work a little better because it's, it's very inefficient already to kind of like jet off of the ground using electricity. It was much easier to like grab something metal and like use electricity to monorail up a, like a gutter or something. But uh, the backpack actually provides additional like battery cells and makes the electrostatic levitation a little more efficient by essentially making ion jets uh that we turn on like to ionize we are the electricity that is ionizing the gas and like so that makes the electrostatic levitation a little easier anyway uh and it's like it, it, immediately you know we call the marketing department like Yes, hello. This is the Electron. I'm finally returning to work. This is what my... I, I, I have faxed you several turnaround photos of the new costume. What do you think? And uh, the, the marketing exec on the other end of the phone says, Uh, that's what those faxes were? Well, I like what you've done with it, sir. Uh, 
let's consider a new run of the bobbleheads. Those were very popular, and uh, let's see if we can't get the molds done for a uh, for a role play toy of the uh, of the backpack, shall we? Maybe the mask. And uh, you know, you sign everything, and you you actually have. You sign as the electron with your left hand, and you just sign kind of a lightning bolt stylized thing that looks a little bit like an E. And so legally, the electron is a separate identity from Everett, so that doesn't happen. So, you know, it doesn't happen that a bank employee knows your secret identity. Anyway, we then we'll pull our next pull our next card now that we've exposited about the costume for a while. It's the four of clubs. Uh, what do we got for the four of clubs? Question of the day. The four of clubs. Someone you care about moves away. So uh, with our merchandise money, what is the action we're taking? I think we're gonna make a promise. No, no, no. We're going to counteract something that happened before. So we were very settled in to uh, living with Sarah. Living, you know, as Sarah's partner. Uh, you know, it was a very relaxed portion of our life. It took the pressure off of people who were, you know, complaining. Oh, why are you single, Everett? You're so cute. You're so handsome. You're so likable. You're so funny. Why aren't people dating you, Everett? Everett! Um, and, uh, you know, that... Not only did it take pressure off of Sarah for people who are, like, trying to lavender scare her, but also, you know, it took the pressure off of us to allow us to remain single because we recognized that uh, being able to not have an actual romantic attachment was making our hero work much, much easier. But, uh, Sarah eventually one day, uh, comes to us and says, uh, Everett, we need to talk. And, uh, we kind of go, uh, 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 yes, but that sounds like a relationship. We need to talk. What's happening? And, uh, Sarah kind of nods and goes, listen, I'm, I don't know how else to put this. I'm moving to the Bay Area, and I don't think you can come with me. Um, you have enough money to cover rent here because of the merchandise. I need to go. I need to go live in San Francisco. Uh... I wish you the best. And essentially, and essentially Sarah goes through the paces of a breakup with us as Everett. And uh, eventually we kind of sigh and say, Sarah, I actually really was enjoying the arrangement we have here. I, I was very much growing to enjoy your company platonically. I Can we talk about this i could apply to i could apply to teams out in the bay area there's gotta be there's gotta be a team or something out there and we kind of stick our head through the through the doorway and say uh oh what was merch girl's name oh i don't remember her name mm -hmm. oh it was uh laura laura was her name uh, Laura, we stick our head through the doorway and go, Hey, Laura! And Laura goes, Yeah! Yeah, Laura, uh, just out of curiosity, I'm trying to settle a bet with Sarah here. Are there any, um, hero teams on the West Coast, say the Bay Area? Bay Area? And, uh, she thinks for a second, and she goes, Uh, yeah, there's like a... There's, like, a one that's made out of teens from, like, who used to be sidekicks of people from, like, that one town in Kansas. And there's, like, the, uh, I think, like, there's an offshoot of the school one. You know, the, the one with the, you know, the school with the guy who can, like, bend metal with his mind. And he's very adamant that he got these, uh, uh, 
He's very adamant that these children are just normal children that are that happen to be able to do things. Yeah, somebody did a spin-off school, like you know the guy with the like with the really long fingernails that don't break. Uh yeah, he decided to be the main professor over there. It's a whole thing. <laughs> and we kind of turn back around to look at Sarah and we're like, see, Sarah? There are teams out there. I could apply. I could be like a chaperone. I could be a mentor. I know that. I know that school might uh, benefit from some uh, from some English classes, huh? And she's like, "You've got a point. Might be good for you to come with me, but only if you promise to apply for those teams and see if there's other teams you can apply for. And if you promise to be." careful about the way you're doing it you know the news getting out that the electron is suddenly moving to the bay area you know someone could track that it's dangerous i'm kind of scoff at her like you think i don't know dangerous the dangers of keeping my identity under wraps and uh, that's the promise we wind up breaking. We never, you know, she moves out and she moves to the Bay Area and we, you know, see her off. We never applied to that school out West. We never even thought about trying to apply, like trying to get a hold of some of the heroes who these uh, teens were sidekicks for to see if they needed a chaperone. It, it just never came together. You know, there was one after another there would there were you know freelance writing opportunities taking up our time and street crime and one time on halloween someone power swapped with us so like instead of having electricity powers we were like a wolf man for like a whole day and a half and it was really annoying because it wasn't what we're used to and then like by the time we got our normal powers back was uh you know right you know the day before we got our normal powers back uh someone had heard someone was trying to form a new team on the west coast in the bay area that was actually of adults and they were going to literally be called the chaperones and like they tried to approach you like hey man uh do you want to come join the chaperones and we couldn't do like the team formation testings because we were Wolfman that week. Like just one thing after another comes up and it just never materializes that we managed to even think about getting into any of these West Coast teams. And so Sarah, you know, just kind of fades out of our life. You know, we send her letters every now and again, uh, you know, and, and she sends us a little Polaroid of, her standing next to her girlfriend and they both look very happy like they're in a pride parade it's really cute and we're really happy you know we're really happy that she's managing to live her best life out there but deep down that loss of one person who knew us deeply enough to know both about our day job and our after hours you know extracurriculars uh it's hard to take I have not been keeping track, by the way, of uh, how many times we've almost lost our our identity. Um, I feel like I should be doing that. What's the epilogue? Uh, is there... Uh, are there not epilogue rules? It just... It said something about epilogues earlier. What the heck? Sorry, I'm getting distracted because I'm thinking about it. Ooh! There's also a way to play this game with two players. We'll look at that in a minute. Um... What the heck? Where's the epilogue rules? It was just talking about the epilogue rules, and it was like, keep track of how many things. Uh, Yeah, keep track of how often you had to lie to people to protect your secret. I mean, like, that's really often. Oh, the scorekeeping is an optional rule. Uh... Yeah, like, we've, we've, we've lied to people plenty of times. We've, we've opened the secret to, like, two more people. Uh, we've had to put ourself first and our safety as a hero first 
much more often than we're putting others first. And our personal life almost constantly suffers. So, you know, let's just keep that in mind when we pull our final card for the evening in 15 minutes. Um, but yeah, that scorekeeping is an optional rule, by the way. Uh, there's also optional rules for two players that I'll look at after the epilogue. Okay, so we'll pull another card. We pull the Queen of Hearts. Uh, what's our action for the Queen of Hearts? Let's read the prompt first. Queen of Hearts means someone assumes your persona doing horrible things in your name. No. Okay. Uh, let's lean in uh, to the previous prompt. Uh, we we're you know going about our day. You know we're going about our night to night. Uh, patrolling, fighting street-level crime, when suddenly the uh, the forum boards start exploding. The forums for the uh, for the electrons start blowing up. People are like, Electron in Bay Area? Electron in San Francisco? Electron in Oakland? Electron seen uh, assisting gang firefights in Oakland? As uh, you know, Electron seen stealing televisions? You know, just like a massive amount of street level crime being caused by someone wearing essentially a note for note reproduction of the uh the gritty reboot costume uh and managing to emulate your powers really effectively like how the heck are they how the heck are they doing that why the heck are they able to do that? Uh, eventually, you know, you you know send some letters back and forth to you know some of the higher level heroes, and they they don't have any leads, they don't have anything. But eventually, you know, you get in contact. Uh, you know, you you activate the little uh, interstellar pager that the galactic cop for Earth, or the galactic cop that was recruited from Earth, handed you uh, last time. There was kind of a team. There was kind of a team up book. Um, sort of situation. Oh god, I pretty just like slapped me directly in the ear with his tail, and that kind of hurt a little bit. Like he, you know how like you can clap somebody on the ear and their hearing turns off for a little bit and it hurts. Library did like a very small, tiny version of that. Anyway, we we bring like the little interstellar pager because it's the '90s and there's an interstellar pager. Um, although it is technically the late, the early 2000s now. But anyway, um. You know, interstellar pager and the or, uh, and the galactic cop that is a, that has called Earth home for many years. Uh, you know, finally gets some time on sabbatical away from his galactic cop duties, and is like, "Yeah, what did you need, Everett? Man, uh, we sh I still owe you that favor from the like from the pumpkin guy thing that happened in like." From the pumpkin guy thing that happened in uh, happened in Kansas City, man. What what's the deal? What do you need? And uh, we kind of explain to him what's happening. That uh, someone essentially stole an earlier design of our costume and is now pulling like street level villainy stuff. And based on the pattern that you're following through the forum. Uh, this guy is preparing for something huge. Like, there was a diamond heist, and, like, he's kidnapped some scientists from a well-known R&D company, and, like, he he's, like, he's stealing very conspicuously, like, death ray type, uh, type pieces if you connect to the dots of all of his crimes, and, like, you're not sure what he's going to do, but it ain't gonna be pretty. And so you ask, you know, Galactic Cop, uh, his name's Jerry Donaldson. We do, we do know the weakness of the costume. That's going to come in, I promise. Uh, Jerry Donaldson is his, uh, is his, uh, you know, non-Galactic Cop name. He's actually known as Galactic Cop. Like, that's his alias. You know how, like, Green Lantern is part of the Green Lantern Corps, and so calling him Green Lantern in a pile of Green Lanterns is kind of rude? Uh, 
Galactic Cop is a title <laughs> that is conferred to these Galactic Cops. So, like, the Earth-level heroes know him as Galactic Cop, but, like, other people know him by a better name. But anyway, Galactic Cop, like... Oh, I lost my train of thought. No. Terrible time for this. Uh, Galactic Cop, uh, you know, kind of picks, like, you know, grabs us around the waist and is like, hold on. Boom. And then he teleports us to the Bay Area. <laughs> and he's like, all right, listen, I'm not just a space cop. I used to be a detective before I became a space cop. So I'm going to go hit the beats. I'm going to go, you know, look around Alameda and, you know, I'm going to go look around Alameda and Oakland and Richmond. And uh, you go check out San Francisco, like across the bridge. You go check out uh, across the bridge, kind of in the tourist districts, because you're a reporter and tourists like to talk to you, right? And you're like, yes. And so we, uh, we rush off to, uh, go talk to tourists in the ferry building. And, uh, meanwhile, Galactic Cop is, like, doing some really cool detective work, like, you know, finding traces of some of the uh, radioactive material that, uh, the, uh, just for fun, let's call him the positron, because that's the opposite of an electron, if I remember right, uh, that the positron has been stealing, and, like, Galactic Cop gets to do all the cool, like, yeah, I'm a noir detective, I'm tracking down the positron, and we're, like, sitting here asking, like, people who walk by in the ferry building, like, Hey, uh, what do you think of this guy? And we hold up the picture of the old costume, and, like, everybody's like, Man, the Electron, he's been causing all these problems, and we're, like, biting our tongue to not be like, His name is the Positron, he's not actually the Electron, why, are, why is he doing this to my reputation? And eventually, uh, enough... Enough turns into enough. Proton, so I think, is close enough, and it sounds cool. Uh... Ooh, yeah, do we want to go with Proton or Positron? Mm hmm. Okay, I like this. I like this. Eventually enough, you know, clues come together and enough time gets wasted. We finally track down this guy's hideout. And, uh... And using the fact that the helmet blinds you when you, uh when it ceases when the camera's on it cease to function uh we actually we defeat this guy and uh steal back our costume and realize that he wasn't even really using our powers he was like technologically recreating our powers and like he only had a very limited number of like blasts and like he was controlling he was controlling electricity by hacking into things and like he was just really like he was basically using, like, Batman-type technology to emulate our powers poorly. And, uh, eventually it comes out in the press. Uh, we suggest to the press, you know, as we, you know, send this guy away in cuffs, we say to the press, Positron has been defeated. And, uh, several press members mishear Positron as pro Proton. So, uh, the... The press kind of disseminates this guy, this guy's image, uh, and explains everything under two different names. So, like, people back in Steel City get really confused and they're like, man, two people stole the Electron's identity and they both did the same, like, kind of street crime? That's really specific. Are you sure it wasn't the Electron doing all this? Like, man. Like, people were really confused and concerned at, like, the level of specificity that is occurring. And we kind of fume a little bit about it. We're like, come on, really? Like, I specifically named him Positron because it's the exact opposite name of me. But no, somebody has to go Proton, which is the positive particle. Ooh. <laughs> And we're a little miffed about it, and like, but we do manage to talk our merchandiser uh, buddies into uh, into releasing some positron versus electron merchandise. Like, there's a kids' play set. There's like a Lego set. 
it's a whole thing. Like there's two act there's an action figure of the positron and the electron. And like they each come with different little accessories and like specifically you get like a little EMP grenade that lights up when you push the button on top of it when you get the electron uh action figure. Library, you track so much litter with those little beans of yours. Where do you keep it all? <laughs> Sorry. Just, he doesn't clean his beans when he gets out of the litter box, so there's just dust underfoot. Yeah, I'm talking about you. Um, anyway. So, Positron defeated. We return to Steel City. Uh, we kind of, you know, give Galacticop a sarcastic salute. And, uh, he kind of crosses his arms genie style and boom, teleports away to the next, uh, Galactic Crime. Clearly very excited about the fact that he got to... Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh yeah he's uh, he's clearly very excited about the fact that he got to do some uh do some crime solving on earth for once he's been so he's been off planet so long he was beginning to forget what people looked like <laughs> oh my gosh i love that so much i can imagine the positron eventually gets lost in translation and his outfit eventually becomes completely different from the one he stole um i love that like 10 years in the future like nobody remembers positron very well so like the costume like they try to re-release the positron figures to capitalize on nostalgia but like the costume is completely wrong like it's bright red and it like has like a sad face etched onto the mask and like and instead of armor, it's got like it's got like a bikini armor type thing going on. Like it's a crop top and like short shorts. It's like just completely the opposite of Positron's actual costume, which was, you know, stealing Electron's costume. <laughs> it's just and like, you know, five you know, like the five people who know who Positron was are very upset, but everybody else is like, dang! This is a good design for Positron. It's like the exact opposite of Electron, because you can see all his skin, and it's red instead of yellow. Wow! You know? Yeah, library. Okay. Last card before the epilogue. The Jack of Hearts. Galactic Cop, our beloved. Listen, when we come back to this and we start, like, Building worlds, I would love to play Galacticop. <laughs> Alternatively, you all are free to play Galacticop. <laughs> anyway, let's let's play this Jack of Hearts before I run out of time, and then we can have time for our epilogue. Um, the Jack of Hearts. You were at a party when the news reports that there is a supervillain causing havoc downtown. So it's new. It is New Year's 2005, and uh, everybody's... Galactic Hop could have such a rich story. Galactic Hop could have such a rich story. <gasps> oh, and you could play Alone Among the Stars to, like, generate all the planets that Galactic Hop is going to to stop crimes. Ooh, that's a good idea. Anyway, so we're at a New Year's party. Um, New Year's 2005. Everybody's like, man, 2004 kind of sucked. You know what? No, even better. Uh, it's two thousand seven. We're like we're looking. Uh, truly, the heart of the cards is with us. The heart of the cards has been with us all night tonight, which has been huge. Uh, so it's two thousand seven, about to be two thousand eight, and uh, as as we're counting down from ten, ten, nine, eight, seven, seven, like seven, and then it cuts off at seven. We interrupt this broadcast and everybody in the bar that we're partying at is jeering and throwing cups at the television. We interrupt this broadcast to inform you that uh, the Silver Wind it has chosen an incredibly poor time as everyone is celebrating, uh, celebrating the incoming New Year 2008 that we hope goes very well to, uh, to steal the... Uh, what are they stealing? What is what is she stealing? She is stealing um uh, to steal the crown jewels 
that are currently on uh, on traveling museum display in the uh, local museum in Steel City. At this time, it is unknown uh, both her whereabouts and her reason for stealing the crown jewels other than the obvious of selling them is unknown. We only hope that the Electron will be on the scene soon. And uh, we look around at all the people that we've been spending the last few years of our life with. Uh, you know, we, we, we talked to Isabella and uh, we thought we talked to Amanda into coming here. And we, we, uh, we talked Sarah into, we talked Sarah into coming back to Steel City. Uh, mostly just to meet her, uh, mostly just to meet her girlfriend who she introduces as a close friend of hers to people around here. Like, we talked Sarah into coming here for the New Year's party, and, like, uh, we thought we invited Amanda, and we thought we saw her earlier in the night, so we had breathed a sigh of relief about it, but turns out, nope. Um, and, like, we had invited Isabella, and, like, all of, all of our roommates had come along, formerly Sarah's roommates. And so, like, we were having a great time when we look at we look at everyone around the circle and we realize that two thirds of the circle know who you know that you are the electron. And uh, we feign grabbing our phone out of our pocket very poorly and go, I, I, I got to take this, guys. Uh, I'll be back later and just rush out. And uh, everyone who knows in the circle just kind of looks after you knowingly like there he goes. Let's hope he comes back from it this time. And, uh, you know, we, we shove our way into a phone booth. You know, someone uh, someone was making a phone call in the phone booth, and and we're like, we we're holding a cell phone and pull them out of the cell. We, we uh, reach over them and click the little uh, hang-up button uh, in, the, in the phone booth and throw them, like, throw them a couple bucks and are like, just make the call again. I need this phone booth real quick. Turn around. And uh, they're so confused that they're like, yeah, okay. And they do. And we like hastily phone booth suit up as the electron uh, and rush off. And then the person turns around and the phone booth is empty and the door is like waving in the wind. And they're like, okay, I guess I'm going to call my mom back. <laughs> and anyway, like the camera pans over and we're like, we're like, dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 just running <laughs> and uh we know exactly where amanda would hide the gems it's on top of the uh it's on top of the megavolt building uh so on top of the megavolt building in an empty uh in an empty air conditioner uh it's a fake air conditioner that we used to hide our suit in and Amanda also knew that clearly, so uh, we know we know that Amanda would hide the jewels there. So we go up there and find Amanda in full like, you know, silver silver wind garb. You know, her hair is floating in the wind. Um, her hair is floating in the wind, uh, dyed silver temporarily, and uh, she's wearing like a a silver di a. Uh, a silver domino mask that like uses light to keep her eyes uh, invisible to the world around her uh and like there's this kind of like cloudy like you know how you look up on a day where the where the sky is just one big wall of cloud that's the motif of her suit um and she's uh she's standing in front of the uh air conditioner the empty air conditioner knowing that we would come and she's like, well, well, well. Uh, or rather, well, well, well. Look who it is. It's Mr. Lightning Lad. And we kind of, Ugh. you know I'm not the, <clears throat> you know I'm not Lightning Lad. I'm not some two-bit comic character. I'm the Electron. And that, and the wires that cross this world give me ever more power. Enough chit chat, and uh, we go to blast at her, and she just laughs, 
as the uh, as the electric blast bends around her and strikes the empty air conditioner, and we hear the the machine behind her power up, and she goes, <laughs> "You fool! I've been trying to power this machine for months." And you just gave it the last little bit of energy it will ever need. Good luck, Bolt Dolt. And she dives, uh, and she dives past us through the stairs door down to the Mega Volt building. And uh, we immediately, uh, you know, our hands wreathed in lightning, rip the fake air conditioner out of the roof and throw it, and it. Through a random window, but we don't notice that. We just notice the machine that's sitting here, and uh, it's it's gently humming. You know, it's it's much more quiet than it initially was powered by. It was much more. It's much more quiet than it initially powered up to be, and uh, the crown jewels have been plucked from their settings and are slowly rotating in a ring around this large pylon-looking thing. And we have no idea what this thing is. But what we do know is that usually, if it's an electronic doodad, and this clearly seems to run on electricity, that we can just overload it. So we reach over and slap our hand against the transformer that powers the entire Megavolt building and grab this pylon by the base and start using our powers to pump more and more energy into this and every muscle in our arms starts shaking harder and harder, our chest practically vibrating with the effort, uh, and we start... <sighs> we can barely handle it. We can feel our heart starting to pound irregularly as, despite our best efforts, the electricity is beginning to pass through our cardiac cavity uh, and giving us you know, some kind of uh, heart difficulty. And we press harder and harder and harder, and then we let out a giant yell and look upwards, and from our eyes beam two, two bolts of lightning. And along with those two bolts of lightning, a third bolt of white light rises from this pylon. And then, upon striking the clouds, <laughs> expands outwards and uh, breaks into a, bit, uh, a hundred, a thousand, a million little motes of light, and each of them uh, snaking their way to an unknown target, one uh, having, having reached its zenith immediately after hitting the clouds, immediately bends back down and strikes us in the chest, and we... <laughs> and are blasted down against the... Uh, against this... Uh, against this rooftop and a second one rolls past our shoulder trying to uh trying to chase after amanda as she has run into the building and we black out when we come to a few hours later uh the sun hitting our swollen eyes uh, we realize that we feel like trash absolutely horrible it takes us a long long moment to muster the strength to rise to a knee and then to our feet and swayingly point a single finger to try and just make sure that everything's intact you know and we point and nothing happens we look at her finger, confused. We point again, flexing muscles in her arm, and nothing happens. And we rub our hands together and try to make a little arc between them, and nothing, nothing happens. Nothing's there. Why isn't it working? And so we rush home the best we can, stumblingly, and uh, down a bunch of spinach and... Uh, spinach and potatoes and bananas and anything and everything high in potassium because the last time our powers stopped working it was just a potassium shortage we just ran out of you know essentially oomph 
and our brain hurt because of it because our body was like no you're not using the last of your brain juice to shoot a silly little lightning bolt so we down a bunch of uh down a bunch of potassium rich food and uh try to sleep it off and the next morning uh, and take a little nap to let our body process all that potassium and uh then we wake up you know an hour or two later and we uh we we look over at the computer and as we've done many times before to try to turn it on from all the way over there in the bed just by you know closing the circuit of the power button just with a little bit of electricity and our hands start to shake as we try harder and harder to summon any gasp of energy nothing absolutely nothing in the coming weeks, it is revealed that whatever happened that night stole the powers of nearly every superpowered individual on the planet, and several that were, uh, several that were patrolling in the galaxy. Nearly all of superhero culture and supervillain culture, for that matter, is wiped out in a single blast of light and a single struggle between a C-list hero and villain completely changes the landscape of the world in a way that no one expects. You know, you when you're looking at an A-list or S-tier hero, you expect, you know, world-ending threats. You don't expect somebody to, you know, walk up to Daredevil, who's, you know, micromanaging the hell out of five blocks in New York, and tell him to stop the end of the world. So nobody expected this to be the Electron's fault, or part of the part of the Silver Wind's plan. But eventually, it's revealed that the Silver Wind tricked Electron into setting off this this machine that only he could have managed to develop to to power hard enough to do this. It's never revealed how the Silver Wind manages to avoid her own machine, but. She's basically the only game in town now. The police continuing to struggle against the struggle in vain against this superpowered individual who is able to, you know, choke the air from their throats with a with a wave of a hand. Uh, it just doesn't go well. You know, you have to you have to once again call on Galacticop like listen, some things are happening on Earth. If you are still powered, you need to come home. And he does. And he's he becomes the street level villain. He becomes the street level hero against the Silver Wind. And uh, eventually enough time passes that the Electron is kind of forgotten. You know, we're ridiculed for a little while for falling for uh, such a blatant uh, blatant trap laid by a villain, but eventually we kind of fade from the public eye. And uh, we kind of let out a breath we didn't know we were holding in regards to keeping life spinning while continuing to be a superhero. And uh, we relax. And... That journal we've been keeping, that story we've been telling right now, that journal we've been keeping by talking into a VHS camcorder and setting the tapes on a shelf somewhere, uh, we go back over all of those tapes, you know, those, those essentially crystallized chunks of life as a hero, and we, you know, change all the names and anonymize everything in a sufficient way. And the last thing we do to make money from being the Electron is publishing a memoir, officially, as the Electron. And it is based on the story we've just told. You know, we go, we, we talk about how we struggle to keep a lot of, uh, our two lives in the balance, how many times... How many times did we, you know, almost 
have the secret of us being the electron leaked, you know, between Sarah and Amanda knowing and, you know, the, the many, many people that worked around us that clearly knew just let us keep the secret because they assumed it was something else. You know, exactly. It all seems like a dream at this point. You know, even though we have video evidence, we still have two of the costumes in the closet. We have, you know, the technology that Positron used to fake our powers in case the world's ever ending again. But I really hope not. You know, but it, even though we have all this evidence and we have written down our story, uh, it all seems like it happened a lifetime, two lifetimes, three lifetimes ago. It's not who we are anymore. Now we're just mild-mannered reporter. Mild-mannered reporter Everett, who is, you know, occasionally getting some residual checks from some book that, you know, occasionally a cape, a, a cape chaser buys a copy or two, or, you know... It's a sign as required reading for the the history of superheroes, uh, you know, Cape 101 type thing. And usually, to be honest, given the draw of the Electron, it's usually Capes 301, Capes 401. Nobody really focuses on that small of a hero that early, unless they're from Steel City. So occasionally you get a check in the mail. Everett Euler gets his little check in the mail from people buying, you know, a few copies here and there of, uh, what's the memoir called? Oh, what's it called? What What's the, like, little, what's the little chunk of the lightning bolt that, uh, comes down first? It's like the guide charge, the leader charge, um, one moment. Because that's a really good name for this. Little piece of lightning bolt that comes down first. Uh, Cloud Flash stepped leader. Stepped leader. Uh... So the, the memoir is called Stepped Leader, The Life of the Electron. And, uh, you know, occasionally we get a few residual checks from our publisher. Uh, you know, when, when ebooks finally rolled around, you know, a little later in our life, it immediately uh, sells much, much faster because, you know, it's a lot easier to, easier to get on demand uh, digitally than it was to try and run down a print copy. Uh, you know, and the nostalgia cycle has rolled over far enough that uh, someone makes a Saturday morning cartoon out of the Electron versus the Positron. Which, despite the fact that the Positron was, uh, was you know, a one, a one week deal for you, the Saturday morning cartoon makes it out like he's been there since the beginning and is, you know, red red hot pants and red crop top and uh you know the the get up that people are like this is the exact opposite of of electron's costume wow uh and you know because that cartoon becomes pretty popular although you don't see a cent in royalties and you hate every moment of the fact that you don't see a cent in royalties from the cartoon even though people are buying your memoir to see how accurate or inaccurate the cartoon is. You never see a cent from any of the cart the cartoon or any of the merchandise that comes out of it. You get essentially screwed out of your intellectual property because uh, eventually, you know, somewhere in the intervening years, uh, someone, dis someone uh, you know, as superheroes wound down, someone decided that uh, Having intellectual property under an assumed name that you are not using anymore doesn't count. So, like, all of the existing superheroes who didn't continue to try and be street-level heroes, uh, their intellectual property, as in their likenesses and their uh, 
their power sets and everything, like all their personal details as a uh, as a hero become they enter the public domain and so there's this huge boom of um there's this huge boom of uh based on a real story superhero uh media because it's very it's free to produce and it's cheap and it's easy uh <laughs> and it kind of it resem uh the the really big stuff resembles uh kind of the marvel superhero uh cinematic universe a little bit you know it's very because they're very easy to produce and make watchable you know there's a huge boom of it and people are already getting sick of it a little bit but meh, meh, such is fate and we just kind of reflect on eventually we just kind of sit back and reflect on the fact that that was something we did we changed the world for the better and maybe we changed the world for the worse it was never really clear how much of an effect removing superpowered people from the world had you know even 10 20 years on it was never clear but overall you know we like to think that we had a positive effect on this on this city on this world on everyone who heard the tale of the electron and realize that yes an average person can do something to affect the world around them and affect it in a positive fashion and every time we see a little kid you know run by pretending they're floating around as the electron as their other friend you know pretends to spout villainy as the positron uh it makes us smile I think that that's a great note to end that on. Um, okay, so that was uh, the condensed version of Beyond Super, Life Behind the Mask. I avoided um, all the optional rules because I did not read the optional rules. I read the main rules and that was it. Um, I really should have read the optional rules. If we come back to this game, I will absolutely be using some of the optional rules. Uh, a lot of the optional rules are like, you roll a d6 to get a theme to build off of a prompt. Or, uh, you know, you keep track of how the... There's like a little meter that lets you keep track of how the public opinion feels about you. And like, there's a... I'm going to read the two-player. Oh, uh, never mind. My computer decided to close the rules without me asking for it, so never mind. But there are two-player rules in here somewhere. Uh, I really, really liked this. You know how you know how I really love uh, superhero... Or superhuman industrial and immaterial incorporated? I think I might have said it right for once in my life. Wow. Um, I really like that because it is a different angle on the superhero story you know you're just an, uh, an average office worker i really like this because it, it it allows you to generate a superhero story really quickly and really well and lets you uh kind of freely examine whatever themes you want about you know comic books and superhero stories as at, at large they're also just great prompts. I really, really love the uh, the mechanic of you have a prompt, now you have five pre-built ways to interpret your response to the prompt. That opens up the prompts so much. Like, you can only get, you know, as we've, uh, as we've seen playing more and more of these deck of cards based games, there's only so many, so many prompts you can attach to 52 cards. When you supply different options to apply to those prompts it opens the prompts up massively which is weird you know because you'd think having the prompts completely open-ended uh would allow you allow you the player to do whatever you want with them but uh they it almost becomes too open-ended and you don't know what you want to do especially with the more simplistic prompts this is a great way to write simplistic prompts and then 
allow the player to choose what sort of details they want to squeeze out of these simplistic prompts. And I really, really like that. I, if I ever get tired of picking a new game each week, I am going to come back to this. Uh, I'm going to, I might actually do, uh, I might actually do something, something like the quiet year. Like I'll do a map builder game of some kind, either on or off stream. And then we could do like a next, we could either like, play in the space of the like five different superhero teams I mentioned in the process of telling this story or we could just do like a next generation type thing like oh no there were secretly genetic superpowers and now the people who were heroes had kids and they have powers but the heroes don't have them like there's so much space to play in even just from this single game that I've played and that that looks so fun. Like, if I ever run out of games, I'm coming back to this. Um, as usual, I'm going to heartily encourage that uh, you all also uh, are allowed to create with this. Uh, build off of the things I've created here. You know, there's there's plenty of space to play with Galacticop. We didn't touch on a lot of uh, the Silver Winds life. Uh... Ooh, yeah, or many years later, powers just come back as part of the villain's plan. Yeah, to, like, induce more chaos. Or, like, you know, Galactic Hop or the Silver Wind or, like, Sarah Silverman's story. Or, like, you know, you could you could look at this from the perspective of a random civilian on the street in, uh, in Steel City. Or, you know, you could do... There's so much uh, room to play with here. Or like you could you could write something as Positron, you know, like maybe maybe before you know like you could write Positron's origin story or something. There's a lot of open space to play with in this one, and I encourage you all to fill in the blanks. Because especially if you all fill in the blanks, then I can borrow that later when we come back to this, and that feels very very fun. Sarah could become the non superpowered hero alongside her girlfriend. That's a fun one. I like that a lot. Like, she, like, maybe she, like, uh, her girlfriend works for, like, a tech startup, and they use that money to, like, make Sarah into, like, an exosuit-wearing hero, kind of like Batman Beyond. That could be really fun. Anyway, there's so much room to play with in these st in this story, because it's it's very easy to play in, because I've basically just borrowed a bunch of loosely codified superhero tropes and put my own little spin on them so then you all can take that little bit of spin I've made and apply even more spin and make the top go burr. <laughs> um, anyway, I had a great time playing this tonight. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, Friday night we're gonna be playing we're playing we're gonna be reading a new book for paper cuts. Originally, I was planning on reading it last week, but I had to do a bunch of stuff. And I only just barely got all of that stuff done. So, anyway. Excuse me. Friday's Paper Cuts will be starting a new book. Um, I, don't, I haven't decided on whether it's the H.G. Wells book or something else. Because I found a couple of other H.G. Wells books that look fun. Uh, I've got a bunch of, you know, other pulp greats that look really fun uh let's see who is live right now but let's see who's live right oh no no the stream chose the worst time to die this is why i can't have nice things have a great week everybody Thank mm -hmm. you.